fun. Uh, brothers running around, you know, finding things to do, shoveling sidewalks, um, playing baseball, and playing music. Uh, that's where we started our music career. Michael was so young and so was Marlon. They were like our little brothers, uh, still playing with little cars and whatever. And we used to like tell them to go do something else because you're too young to be in this group. And uh, until we heard Michael sing one day. Our brother singing this song, and we immediately rushed him home. You're in the group. He was in the group, and and Marlon joined the group later. And then we had the Jackson Five. He was only in kindergarten, and he sang "Climb Every Mountain." And his grandfather had attended with me, and I looked over, and Dad was crying like a baby. The moment I laid eyes on Michael Jackson was when he was singing with the Jackson 5 as a little kid and then he had Sullivan show. We at CBS Records at the time, I was with Columbia as the Vice President of Promotion, we just didn't really have that kind of artist on the label. A lot of it was classic artists, Barbara Streisand, Tony Bennett, The Birds, Bob Dylan, but, but the Jacksons were magic. His coordination and all, it was more, it was never like a young child. It was always like an older person that, and uh, he was able to dance, able to learn. And he just picked up things very easily. He just was born that way. He was made to sing. We were right about him, watching him, and that's, that was how he motivated everybody, from Jermaine and, and Tito and Marlon and Randy. They, all, they were all energized by him in such a very special way. They had a dream. I mean, they, they saw the possibility of this gigantic success, and what made it possible was Michael's talent. He was just trying to use something that was stirring him inside. You know, music made him come alive. He was born with it, with this fire, with this spirit about music, and he was still too young to understand it. He, he was, you know, a revelatory character. He was just such an electric presence, and he was this little kid. From the beginning, I knew what, I, what he was like and how he could sing and dance and all that type of thing. But Michael was very easy to catch on to anything. Once he see it, he can just about do it just as good as the person that was doing it. We had a Volkswagen bus, um, like a 60s, and uh, we used to put all the equipment inside of the bus. And we would ride on the equipment, whether we were going to New York or Chicago or wherever for hours. I kind of felt robbed because um, when we were back in Indiana, uh, the family used to eat together and do everything together. And after they came to California and um, becoming famous and all, they had a lot more to do. And so uh, we didn't even eat dinner together. So most of the time they were in the studio. My mom, and I know this for sure, is the greatest mother in the world. Uh, she was always sweet, she was supporting. She let us do things that uh, my father wouldn't let us do, but she, she was more of just not just being a parent, she was like a friend. Yeah, I saw myself in Michael a lot, and Michael would even tell me, Mother, I'm too much like you. I said, I don't want you to be like me. I said, because you're a man and you're gonna, going into business and you need to be stronger, but it was just something that he couldn't do. Michael needed a manager to manage him. Michael needed somebody to worry about him and not look to him as a meal ticket. That's a pretty good statement. His childhood was taken away from him. He was separated as a child from the one person in the world who made him feel loved for much of his life. His mother was the one person who made him feel loved. I wish that I had have said that's enough. Um, yes, I could have said that, but the, his father was the one that was um, with him all the time. And I didn't realize that, that he was working as hard as he was. He's always been like a mystery man, really. Mm -hmm. And he knows it because 
I mean, once he stopped talking about business, he, he'll leave the room because he knows he, he can't touch up on other subjects because he knows it's like, it's too father and son-like. Mm -hmm. He's too embarrassed and I'm too embarrassed. I think he tries sometimes. Mm -hmm. He really does try, but some people just don't know how to show love. Well, you only get one father, whether you call him Pop's father, Dad, Joe, or whatever. You know who he is. You know where your relationship is. You know, it's, it does, that's just a title, that's just a name. You know, it's all about the heart. You know, I love my father. I wouldn't trade him for any father in the world because he did something great. And I think uh, a family coming from Gary, Indiana to accomplish the things that we have, he was the thriving force behind it, all of that. My mom and my dad. It was too many demands made you know, for Michael to do the things that he was doing when he was, a ch when he was a child. So he didn't miss some of his childhood, but he enjoyed some of it too, but not as much as I know that he would like to have done. He always used to say that to us, and I didn't know what he meant by that. But like, you know, as I got older, I guess I kind of understood because he always had to work, and he explained it to us like how that is. Um, that is like, I don't think that's right, you know, but it made him, who he is. My father understood that he had six boys, that these are gonna be men one day, and he wants them to be responsible, grow up, to be able to take care of themselves. So his whole thing was to teach us at a young age how to work, responsibility, jobs, uh, uh, just not blowing your time and having fun all the time. I don't regret that Michael was in show business at a young age. So I can't talk against it. But if that's what the mothers want the child to do, but make sure it's at a slow pace and make sure the child have plenty of time to grow and to, um, to enjoy some of their life and don't put all of it into just work, 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 work all the time. Motown had a factory. They were very successful. Um, I admire Barry Gordy. He said, the Jackson Five are upstairs and these kids all want to meet him. And I picked up the phone and I said, Michael Jackson, please. And they rang the room. And I introduced myself, Vice President, General Manager of Epic Records. And I said, I'm a big fan, I'd like to meet you. He said, I'll be right down. And I, when I first met him, it was kind of confusing because he was this quiet, shy, 
uh, somewhat introverted individual, and he was letting his dad do a lot of the talking, and I wanted to talk to him, so he opened up to me. We were talking music, his likes, what he wanted to accomplish, different than that he had already accomplished. And that's when the magic came out, and he said he'd like to maybe produce and write his own music. Do you have any problem with that, Ron? And I said, absolutely not. That's the way he talked to me. Very specific. A lawyer had called me into his office and told me uh, that I should tell my other children to start saving their money because Michael was going solo. I told him Michael was not going solo. He doesn't need his brothers. This is what he said. I said, they need one another. And um, they had already planned his future themselves. Michael didn't know anything about what they were planning. But um, I, didn't, I didn't feel too good about it. Michael was going to go solo the day he sat in my office because he was there by himself, you know? He was not sitting there with his brothers. He always told us that he never really left the group, you know? He just was pursuing his solo career, which he's more than entitled to do. Um, to be a solo artist is done all the time. And he, he assured us that he was always a member of the Jacksons. It's just a matter of timing. I think he wanted it a long time ago, but he was afraid to say something about it. When they did um, the Victory Tour, they just went back together for a while, and I liked that a lot.